Hey, what's going on with your family? We're excited to be on tonight talking about LaMelo. I'm sorry, Lee Angelo Ball. We are pumped up. I, I, I'm telling you, I don't care what anyone else says, what they talk about. What they, Let me fix this stuff, though. I don't care what they say. The young man is simply playing basketball. Bottom line, playing basketball. And I appreciate his game. Tonight, to me, was off the chain. Tonight, he, he, to, he to me, he really dominated. And if you ask me, he got busy. That's what we want to talk about tonight. I'm going to put the link in the room so you can come in and let's discuss it. Because here's the reality. If you ask me right now, I'll take him off the summer league team. And I'll tell you why. He's too well advanced. He's too well advanced to be out there with them kids. And watch this. Yet he's the same age. As, as most of those kids, he's the same age, but he's too advanced to be out there on the floor with those kids. So if it's me, I'm, I'm pulling him already. I'm sitting him down. And some people say, well, well, he got a lot to work on. You're misunderstanding what they're trying to see. They're not observing him like one of the rookies who just come out there. But what they're doing, they're looking at his overall game to see if he will mesh with NBA players. Well, with the talent on the floor right now, there's no way you will ever know. But what we see from him and what we're looking at and what we're observing, oh, no, he's got it ready to go right now. Hey, pull up. on Pull up. I'll put the link in the room if you want to pull up on in. Come on in. Let's talk about it. But right now, this kid, man, he, he's the business. And it's just not my opinion. It's what I'm seeing and what I'm observing. And, and, and the point guards, if they say some of these young point guards in the future will be LaMelo's backup, I'm not seeing it. But I'll tell you one thing I see about Jello. He's smooth. He has basketball swag. The young man is balling off the chain. When I say he's smooth, he's smooth. Hey, we got 15 people in the room. Do me a favor. Hit that like button. Hit that like button. All right? So what am I saying? Hey, Jello will make the team. I guarantee. I guarantee. He will Make the team. Pull up on the stream. All right? I put it in the book. There we go. We got D-Mac coming in. But listen to me. He will make the team. What's going on with you, D? What's going on, brother? Man, did you watch that game, man? I did. I did, man. And um, I'm impressed, man. I'm, I'm glad to see him be able to switch his game up and not just be one-dimensional. Everybody's looking for him to come and rain threes. And it, and we knew that they was going to try to lock that down, man, and he found other ways to score late in the game to keep it competitive and close. I liked it, man. Yeah, but here's the thing, which a lot of people are not paying attention to. Um, when you come on in the room, make sure you hit that like button, and we appreciate you sharing with us. Here's what a lot of people is not paying attention to. The young man is balling, man. When you look at the game from an all-around perspective, he's doing what he's supposed to do. He's playing yeah. defense. He's stealing the ball. And when he when they need a three, he's hitting the three. What, what more do you want? I, I read some other people's and I go to other people's rooms and their lives. Oh, well, he needs to work on this. He, I'm like, are you crazy? The man, young, hey, go ahead, D. It's his second game, man. And I said before that he was going to be up under a microscope. Everything that he does is going to be overly analyzed and it's going to just be put out there and blown up because they, it, it, you know how they feel about this kid. He's been blackballed for the longest. His father found a way in for him. So any, any misstep, they're going to highlight it. If, if, it's, if it's me, D, I'm going to tell you what I'm doing. I'm pulling him off the field. I mean, I'm pulling him off the court. You know why? He doesn't need to be out there. He has nothing to prove. He has he has nothing to prove. I'm pulling him off right now. Well, see what they're really trying to find out is, um, you know, knocking off that rust for not playing for so long. Right. Getting him back into the mindset, into the uh, physicality of playing against top competition. That's what right. they're doing right now with him. I, that's what I feel like it is. Knock the rust off. His roster spot is there. That's all they have to do is stay consistent. Oh, that's right. Facts. Great thing, point. Man. 
Yeah, what the, so what they'll do, what's up, nine? What they'll do, they'll let him in and let him play. And in that, like you say, he'll get the rust off and he can come out there and get his ball on. I got you. What's going on, yeah. nine? Yeah, so no, I, 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 I'm, man, I'll tell you, when that dude ran all the way down the floor on that turnover, stole the ball, kicked it back down court, I'm like, this dude, I see what you're saying. He's ready to go. He's ready to play. And that's what pumped me up, man. I'm looking at that like, man, Marquina, hey, now, what's going on with you? He mm-hmm. he good close out, but he did, like, what, what'd she say? Like LaMelo made plays for the – that's right. And that's what we're saying, Marquina. If you watched him play, he had an overall good game. Forget the points he scored. That didn't matter. He when when he hit when he shot that three and went and got his own rebound. Oh yes. <laughs> yeah, and that little floater, yeah. Yeah, man. Watch the D. He put it up amongst the trees, man. That's what I was looking for from him this game was his basketball IQ. Last game showed us that he can shoot, which LeVar had already told us, but this game showed us his basketball IQ. Hey man, I'm telling you something like we talked about last night. That floor is his – it takes away his stressors, man. When he's on that floor, he's a total different beast, a monster. LeVar Ball, watch this. LeVar Ball just created a narrative for all parents. Parents are going to send their kids overseas now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They, make sure they got the right structure and that they put in that time like LeVar did because that could end up bad for them if they're not willing to involve themselves that much. Facts, facts. Hey, Macrina, do us a favor. Um, we want to make sure that we get your comments and we want to hear what you have to say. So make sure you leave your comments so we can talk about them because what you we want you a part of this platform also. Hey, Nine, what's going on with you, man? Yeah, so 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 I'm telling you, D, watch this. When I watch that young man tonight, man, and what I'm seeing is I'm seeing LeVar Ball – his kids understand the foundational principles of the game. Don't go out there and try to be too much. Don't go, don't try to do too much. Just go out there and win. That's why he said, and, it, you know, I now noticed in the interviews, hey, it's basically along the same lines of what LaMelo said. At the end of the day, it's just basketball, man. Right. <laughs> and and in the same vein. <laughs> and you guys got the, the, the Lonzo ball is legit now. That mm-hmm. That's whatever they were investigating. That's over with. Lonzo Ball is a Chicago bull. I'm telling you, man. And just like we talked about tomorrow, I guarantee you that old media will be on tomorrow talking about this kid now. They're going to have to. They're going to have to. But if it's me, I've seen enough. I'm sitting them down because these young kids are making them look bad. Well, I think that uh, old media didn't want to jump on the uh, story too soon. They wanted to see this game and put together a um, a, a narrative of their own. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what they have to say. So I'm going to be standing by because, like I said, I'm going to keep my eyes peeled to see what they're going to say because uh, we know how these guys will take a narrative and push it and so it's it's, it's going to be interesting, man. Yeah, man. The, the young man can play, man. That's all I can say. I, I um, what you said today, we seen him hit the three. We understand he can do that. But how how does he collapse when it comes time to crashing the boards? We seen him do that two games in a row, crash the board when he hit that three and missed it when he got his own rebound and put it right back up with that little nice floater. Like Macrina said, he looks just like his brother. He looks just like Lamelo when he hit that floater. I'm like, man, Lavard taught his boys some things. Hey, Nine, mm-hmm. you there, man? Yeah, yeah your, your mic is kind of broken up. And it's hustle in the game, and that was impressive, too. Oh, yeah, man. I'm telling you, when he when he went down, I had the video all set up and ready to go. Somehow it got deleted. But, when man, when he got that steal, came, ran all hustle down the floor, man, everybody else on the Charlotte team was just sitting back. They weren't even looking to get involved. Hey, do me a favor. We have 14, 15 people in the room. Make sure you like. Leave your comments. We want to talk to you. We want a dialogue. And you know what time it is. But, yeah, man, when he ran back down there and did that, bro, I, yeah. was, blown, I was blown out the water, man. I'm telling you. Yeah, I, I was 
in it, man. Really, I made a prediction. Right when they put uh, Leangelo in the game, I made a prediction of 22 points, five uh, rebounds, and six assists. Wow. For the game. That's what I was giving him for tonight. Uh, he make- got, so he got 10 points in and in, uh, five. I'm satisfied with that. I was just overreaching. Yeah, I'm not going to knock the kid, man, because watch this, D. Can you imagine him, Miles Bridges, <laughs> ooh, 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 ooh. Uh, with his yeah. brother on the floor? And I don't care who he the floor. Come on, man. Man, that's that's going to be a problem next season, man. It really is. But they got to get Kirk, uh, what is his name? Uh, Vernon Carey Jr. They got to get him on on the ball though. Well, they playing yeah. Nick Nick Richardson a whole lot. Yeah, I seen a few flashes from Nick uh, Richardson. He he looks pretty good, man. But one experienced big man is gonna make all the difference in Charlotte. Oh, and they got that other kid, Jones, man. I think that's his name, who's a high flyer. And remember, LaMelo had that type of kid over at Spire Institute. He had Rocky Watts and the yeah. other guy who can jump out the gym. And this guy looks just like him. Yeah. Well, they're going to be a problem, man. Once they get that that big man problem fixed, then they're going to be a problem for everybody in the East. Man, do me a favor. If, if you just come in the room or you're in the room, smash that like button. Let us know you're here. Also, leave a comment because we do appreciate you. We got um, Nine Arm, Macrina, Big J, and D Mac. All right. So, we're talking about LaMelo Balls, his brother, LiAngelo Ball, and what's going on over in Charlotte. I believe that Charlotte had to have more common sense than anyone in the NBA by giving that kid a chance. And if you were trying to stop him because of his dad, shame on you. Well, see, that's the thing that uh, gets me is that he's showing them that it had absolutely nothing to do with his game as to the reason why they were blackballing him from the NBA. Wow. Wow. Watch, this watch is what, being exposed now. Yeah, exactly. Watch what McCreena said. It still has plenty trollers out there who are still saying he's not that good. But remember, he's playing good for not playing um, for three years. But they still mm, yeah. need to help him develop NBA hustle 100 percent And that's <laughs> she's on point. Thank mm-hmm. you, Macrina. That's 100 percent Because here's the reality. And we know this is not NBA level basketball yet. But the way he's playing, watch this. He's playing above the competition that's out there. And isn't that what we want to see? Because if he played to their level or below them, then we have a problem. Houston, we have a problem. But he's playing above their level. What do you think, D? Yeah, and sometimes slowing him down. Uh, sometimes he has to slow down his pace in order for the other guys to be able to, you know, um, set up and stuff like that. Facts, facts. And, and But again, he, he and I do believe what you're saying is right. He's slowing down. But is there some things that he needs to work on, like McCrean said? Yes. But from my opinion, where he is right now, as long as he doesn't play below them. And then remember, he's not starting. He needs to start for us to see the true Leangelo. He needs to start, not come off the bench. For him not starting the way he's playing right now, he's he's doing a great job. And this uh, is what – go ahead. Uh, he definitely going through the same route. We remember last year how we was getting on Borregos for um, not starting Lamelo when he should have. Facts. But – you know, so they'll just learn the hard way, same as here, because you notice when LaMelo got in the game, the whole pace, the whole energy of the game changed, the momentum changed, and then next thing you know, he brought them within what? I think seven points. Right. He drew that gap, and so we see what he brings to the game. Just like um, his brothers, they make people better around them <laughs> man macrina is cooking she say he not accustomed to playing slow she got it that's right he's, he's really right he's the run he's used to running he's not used to the slow game he's used to running yeah, yeah latino hill style and uh that's what they scared of because when them boys get together and i think miles bridges is all the way in for that style of basketball he's a those three right there can become a potential big three in the league over a few years i believe that go ahead nine yeah we can hear you go ahead is it about starting or is it more about situational basketball 
at this point, I would say starting. But when it comes to the league situational, yes. But at this point, he needs as many reps as he can get. And but that's but, what d Max said earlier. But wouldn't situational basketball be more valuable? Well, if, guess what? It would be, but I don't know if you watched the game. The point guards are not distributing the ball. They're turning the ball over. Um, Broad Knight, whatever his name, I can't think of his name, he has averaging five to six turnovers in these two games. So if it was to where it was situational, to where they are playing under the umbrella of the coach, then I would say yes. But the way it is right now, he needs to get as many reps as he can, like Marcrina said, and going up and down that floor. Because with the level of turnovers and them not being able to run the coach's offense, is actually hurting his rhythm. Yeah, now, now I'm looking at um, as far as starting. If you look at I, I, the this league that they're in, you want to be able to start at a fast pace. Uh, you don't want to be playing catch up the whole game. And so, if you have Leangelo in there starting, he's going to come with a fast pace off start, and that's going to give you an edge on most teams. Hey, what's up, fam? What's going on with your family? Go ahead and jump in, man. Thank you for pulling up. What up? What up? Hey, Talk man, we're trying to be like you. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Tell me what you oh, think okay. about Leangelo so far. Uh, I think he had a very, very solid game today. Okay. Uh, you know, I won't go and say he did outstanding. Uh, I think in order to, to make that, that conclusion, he would have to do a little bit more uh, off the ball and attack the basket a little bit more consistently and effectively. Right. And that's, and I think the majority ahead. of the blame, go, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, you're good. Yeah, good I was going to say ahead. the majority of the blame, the majority of the blame lays with the guards, the point guards. And I say point guards loosely because Book Knight's not a point guard, but the people playing point guards, yeah, they were, they were shook uh, by Davion and, and the other guard, I forgot his name for the Kings. They were, Hyper aggressive. That's good. You need to know how to deal with that to play in the league. Exactly, because that uh, the the Kings. That's a, a defensive team right there, and to be able to make that um, adjustment and still be able to come out with ten points, that's a real good look. But, Sometimes but your we, points are going to be ugly. Go ahead, nine. I want to get back to what you said, nine. Go ahead. I are, are we judging this as team evaluation or individual evaluation? Because this is about individual evaluation and whatever the guards are doing is not a strike against him. Exactly. But what it does, and I'm agreeing with you 100%. It's the, see, what Macrina said is so true. It stops his rhythm. It stopped the, his flow. Those three boys, their father had them playing, like she said, like gazelles and deers up and down the floor. And you could see him every time the ball moves, he autom he's automatically out the blocks, like he's ready for something. But if the point guards, like, like Finn said, if the point guards cannot distribute, and even though they might not be point guards, but you're still put at that position to distribute, even if you're evaluating. For example, we have the home run derby in baseball, right? I don't think they will put a guy on the top of the mound who can't throw a strike so these individuals will have the, the opportunity to hit it out the park. Would you agree or disagree? But but now this is right. This this what you gotta look at, right? That's what the coaches want to see. When the, the guards turning the ball over, are you dropping your head? Are you not playing a hundred percent? So this is very valuable. So I'm not looking at it as a negative because there's so much positive. To take away when it's not going your way. Facts, facts, one hundred percent. And that's the that's and that's the break. Go ahead, go ahead, fan. Okay, no, I was gonna say that's true. What he just said is true, but I would say Jello is more dependent on point guard play than your average shooting guard. And so, how do you factor that in? Is that a strike against them, or do you just say, you know, it is what it is? Because I, I not every shooting guard is that dependent on a point guard getting them the ball in their spots. Some shooting guards can go make it happen. And if he's not one of those guys, that's okay. But you can, you know, we can comment on that too. Yeah, Jello is one of those set shooters. He's one of those guys who like to post up in that corner you see in the first game. When he posted up in that corner, they left him alone. 
and they shouted out there to him. He's comfortable in those spots. That's where he was in Chino Hills the whole time. He just post up. You had uh, Melo bringing the ball down, and he could either pass it to Jello or Zoe. And so he was always a setup guy. So and I grew, I grew he's with comfortable with that. He's yeah. going to have to transition out of that and start to move around more. But that's that's his normal style of play. And I agree with what you're saying, Nye, but let me say this again. When you have a kid, like all of LeVar's sons have been trained at a high pace and a high level. Watch this. LeAngelo is the only kid on the team running the offense. <laughs> is anybody seeing that other than myself? He's in the spots. He's picking the spots right. He's doing and I'm like, is, is he the only one doing it? Go ahead, guys. Yeah. Yeah, you definitely saw the energy change, man, and the pace of the game pick up whenever Jello got in there. It's just like when Melo got his shine coming off the bench. You see the flashes of good, good uh, stuff from him, and things that need to be worked on. It's just a process, man. That's all. Go ahead, nine. Honestly, Jello, yeah, Jello was one of the only people throwing the ball ahead. <laughs> hey, hey, yeah. Exactly. Exactly, like like he knows the game, and this is what I'm saying. He understands what's supposed to take place. Now I understand Lavar Ball, and I'm not going to talk about Lavar Ball. But what I'm say, what I'm saying is this: that his kids understand the game. He, his outlet is amazing. Him streaking down the floor, he doesn't have to be the fast one. His hustle is what's getting is going to get him to that next level. Maybe six man of the year one year. I don't know, but that's just my opinion. But that's what the coaches are looking for. This but now you, you don't think they already found that in him, now? This is individual evaluation. We can't look at it in a team, in a team concept. The coaches are evaluating each player and what he's yeah. been doing so far. He's showing that he he can fit on an NBA roster. Facts, facts. Agreed. And I'm agree. Go ahead, go ahead. I agree 100. percent and because um, he's he's uh, he like I said, they just got to knock off that rust. These games right here and knocking off that rust for LiAngelo so he can get back comfortable in his zone. And once he does, his his roster spot is pretty much there. Well, what would you guys give LiAngelo today? A letter grade, A, B, C, B plus for his performance B, today. B plus. I'll give him a C. I'll give him a C plus. I, I would say I would say a B. Yeah. Because he, he showed a, a willingness. He showed a willingness to go inside and, and that's something they're looking for also. And but, honestly, but what, I, I I saw fear in the eyes of the Hornets guards and I didn't see it in him. So I gotta give Exactly. Him I saw fear. Yep. And and that's what I'm saying. He brings the calmness to that team. And, and nine, let me say this, right? What my man is saying. When you look at Leandro Ball, right? You're looking at a guy who understands I'm only out here. And isn't wait a minute, isn't it evaluation to make sure that the players understand what spot that they need to get to? And you're watch this. I would when I when I taught my kids, they were growing up, a point guard never runs straight down the court in the middle of the in the middle of the court. There's lanes. Yeah. These kids come out of college, and I saw no lanes. But, they didn't but, know how to. Uh, oh, oh. We, we, we can't say inexperienced. We can't equate inexperience. <laughs> I, I don't think that's right. I know, but what I'm saying, nine is this, and somebody, if I'm wrong, you guys let me know. I, I, I feel that you should know the basics of pick and pop. I feel you should know the basics of um, dropping the ball down low and it's coming back out. So you got to run to your spot. But, those but, are things. If those are things that if you want to incur that if you want to show the coach that you're ready to play, those are all little things that you should be able to do. But 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 Big J, you're you're talking basketball. You're not talking the the plays the coaches are calling. That's something different. Is a play being called every time up and down the court. So you can't expect them to do something beyond the play that's being called. And then you, you also have to think about the lack of experience also with these new guards in a new system that they never played before. 
And yeah, and then too, on top of that, you have to look at. I'm sure that those guys recognize all of the press that Leangelo Ball got after the game last night, and that didn't sit too well with everybody on the team. So everybody felt like I have to step it up for myself. Remember, all of these guys are competing for a spot, and so they feel like I got to step it up. And so there's gonna be less passes going to Leangelo now. Yes, are we and giving that's correct. Uh, are we giving too much shine to Leangelo? Are we talking about him too much? Are we making too much of it than it really is? He he he's one of the biggest talking point of the preseason. Why not talk about him? Oh, media is not. <laughs> but 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 like I said earlier, you looking at a unrestricted free agent, they don't get talked about. Usually only the top players get talked about in summer league. So that's a local story, not a national story. So I can't blame the, the media for not jumping on, on board just because we want them to, but, but that, that's, that's not something they do to undrafted players. Let's, let's hear what everybody thinks that Leandro needs to do from this point going on and out, going on. Uh, Leandro needs to play his game. He, he don't need to listen to everybody on the outside who's going to speculate and stuff like that. He needs to play his game, uh, calm down, and, like, when he gets in the game, make the most of his minutes. Facts. I, I, think, I think he needs to get his ball handling better because he really does look undersized playing that three spot. So he have to play the two. Without the ball handling, he could be like a Duncan Robinson, just a sniper. But if he get his ball handling up and his facilitating, then you're talking about he could be a very impactful player. Okay. Hmm. The next lit. Well, go ahead. Oh, well, until he come back on, um, I definitely see um, – because you, old media is not going to say anything because they've put their foot in the mouth so many times with these young men. And we've seen a pattern start to develop with these young men, making them look foolish in these, um, these prejudgments of them. And so I think old media has gotten wise to that, and they're going to hold their reservations for a minute before they put their foot in their mouth again. Facts. Facts. Yeah. yeah. Oh. If he scored 50 points and the media didn't talk about it, then I can agree. But we're talking about an undrafted, unrestricted free agent who most players like that don't make a team. So why would a a big media even take a chance on talking about somebody like that, unless you're just trying to jump on the ball name for clicks and views. Right. Yeah, right. It's, it's for the brand. It's for, that's what it's all about now. The brand, the the name that he carries is going to bring a certain amount of fanfare with it alone. And the storyline behind it now is what makes it so interesting and so for real sports fans we're gonna sit back and we want to watch this thing unfold because it's, it's definitely a good storyline and it's going to make the corporate entities not come out in a very good light because it'll show and expose why they've been blackballing this kid from the league and it definitely doesn't have anything to do with his skills but but how can how can now what what we can sell YouTube short because he's probably been the most talked about and most viewed player without big media yesterday and today. So he's getting ample attention. That's what makes him so appealing because he's doing it without big media. And that's the whole thing that LeVar has been preaching this whole time. We don't need big media in order to make it big. And so that storyline is appealing to people who like to pull for the underdog. And, well, and his, so his kids have already been at that level of success. You have to remember, Leangelo was the number um, two scorer in the state of California. Um, they, they went 35-0 and 0 the year. They won everything. So his kids have always been in the limelight. If you go back, you remember LaBella Ball 
scored 30, I mean, 34 points when Zion scored 36 when they played against each other. So they've always been at that level. Like Jello said last night, man, I played against pro players before. I played against all type of players before. So what we do have to look at is that these kids have already been there. They've already been at that level. So, so where does it go from here? Because I don't think they need them. Like we, I think we have fun with it. But do they need the media attention? I don't think so. And and we should always stop waiting for big media to value it, validate something. We don't need them anymore. I mean, the change, the changing of the God has already happened. It, it's been Facts. A, a huge shift. Nobody, Facts. nobody. Remember, keep this in mind. When you leave the house. The first thing you're doing, you're grabbing your phone. So yep. social media on your phone or on your iPad is way bigger than television now. Facts. You know, Absolutely. So hey, make, everyone, make sure you hit that like button. Also, we see the individuals in here from, from our podcast, and we want to say thank you for coming on and being a part of the family. We really do appreciate you. Go ahead, um, Nine. I'm sorry. Yeah. YouTube is stealing all the media right now the media Facts. actually jumping on board of youtube stealing youtube talking points because youtube is now bigger than media so Facts. we nobody should be looking to those guys to validate anything nobody needs them no more nobody even listen to them no more my kids if i was to turn on espn they laugh at me like man all those people do is talk loud they don't even like it <laughs> Man, could could you imagine what would happen if all the con create content creators came on one platform and came together and put all the nonsense down and just said, listen, we're taking over from a social media perspective. What will happen? Oh, my goodness. Over the last six years, we've taken. Yeah, your, your mic is going in and out, D. Yeah, we, we, we don't want to be in a world where everybody's the same, Big J. Right, right. No, I just said I just said for one day, if we just had an agreement to talk about something that we see wrong for one day, but not be the same. Go ahead. If everybody agrees, Big J, that would be the most boring thing you ever heard. You'll be <laughs> I, I agree 100%. Hey, we got John, U.S. Army Strong. Leandro Ball is going to be something special. I hope one day Leandro Ball can be a Laker. Man, I see that down the road. From uh, and here's what I here's what I agree with John. I think Charlotte understands that Lamelo Ball is the ticket draw, and that he will win many MVPs and championships. And if his brothers go with him, that means Charlotte is out. It's almost, in my opinion. Like Charlotte has to play and sign Leandro Ball. But what I think they found out, they do have something special and they're excited about that. I, I think right about now, some some scouts are getting chastised by the front office for <laughs> dropping the ball and overlooking Leandro. Again, yes, 100%. Hey, heads are rolling right now because a lot of people are not happy because right now, Every team needs a sniper. Yep. And for for 30 teams to turn down a sniper, a lot of heads are about to roll once he pans yep. out. Yeah, and, and that's the same thing like this, Nine. If we go back and look at it, when he was with Detroit, they didn't talk to him. They didn't give him the opportunity. He came to the summer league game or G League, whatever it was. He never played. All he was was on his phone. Is like, um, and for what I understand, they were given J JJ to say thank you for bringing him. So, man, I I'm telling you. Oh, that's for sure, bro. That's no problem, man. I, I wanted you to pronounce your name. Um, can somebody pronounce? Is it Phoenix Lit? Yeah, Phoenix Lit. Phoenix Lit. Okay. Anytime, man. Anytime. Come on back. I'm gonna, I'm gonna subscribe to your channel, bro. For sure, man. I appreciate your talking points. Yeah, but nine for sure, man. And, and and you're right. I think Detroit, Oklahoma City, some people are going to really have to pay attention. Like, what did we do? The same thing with LaMelo, with Golden State. 
And you're right. And, hey, it's going to happen. But, hey, but, everyone but, do me a favor. Do me a favor. Go by Phoenix Lit and subscribe to his channel. Also, give him a like and a comment. That's, I'm going to leave his name on the screen for a minute. Everybody go by his channel and subscribe, please. Go I, ahead. I'm, um, I'm always on the side of what's supposed to happen will happen. So I don't, I don't, I'm not into blaming Detroit because if you look at who they've been drafting, he really wouldn't fit in anyway. So I think he's in the right, right situation right now. Right. I concur. Yeah. Go ahead, D, you back? Yeah. You hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, yeah, I was definitely agreeing on that because if they get him a roster spot in Charlotte, I can't see anything pulling Leangelo Ball away from that situation. That's a prime situation for him. He's there with his brother. He's in a place where they can capitalize because it's a small market team and they can really do a lot in Charlotte. And so I, I couldn't imagine him leaving that situation if he got that roster spot. Hey man, but you what you have to look out too is about money, man. And could you imagine somebody offering Leandro Ball being an unrestricted free agent, a couple of bags, based on his put watch this, but not based on his playing now, but based on his potential? Do you think he would take the money or stay with his brother? He'll stay with his brother. Uh according to Lavar, he should stay with his brother. They don't care about the money. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let me read this from let me read this from John. Do you guys feel as though the way the Lakers team is structured, um, is structured teams in the playoffs are going to expose us? I think we gotten weaker, definitely, and defense wins championships. We're going to come to that in a few seconds, bro. I'm going to tell you why, John. Well, we can go there now. I'm going to let the panel talk. Go ahead, guys. Are the Lakers weaker or stronger? They're going to be weaker, man, for the simple fact that um, if – these older guys, if you take that starting lineup, I made a joke earlier, how many out of that starting five is going to have Beijing in their beard? You got all these older guys who's going to be trying to run with these younger teams, and they are not going to be able to do it, man. Maybe two out of the five starting are going to be able to run with these young guys. So uh, I think they are going to get weaker defensively. Here's my opinion. The Lakers are the senior team right now. I live in I live in California. I love, I love the Lakers, right? But they are the senior team right now. And the reality for me is Russell Westbrook is that deer, like Macrina said. He's going to run up and down the floor, up and down the floor. And LeBron and AD, even though AD's younger, they're not going to be, be able to run with him. That's going to be a problem. Shit splits. I got some Laker takes, too. Oh, you got Laker tickets? <laughs> and, uh, that's like a Laker takes. <laughs> oh, okay. Go life. ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, you know, Westbrook is for the regular season. I think that's what you're what you're essentially saying, and I agree. Right. That was, that was genius. That was genius for 82 game season. All those 30 late 30 year olds on that team. Russell's the one who's gonna gonna carry them to a, a good seating in the playoffs. That makes a lot of sense. But that makes I, a lot I, of I, sense. Hard-headed and stubborn is never a good fit, no matter where you send up. Go ahead, Nye. That, that's my problem with, with Westbrook. I don't you think can talk about it. that deal. They knew what was coming with Russell Westbrook. We, we, and, and you have to ask yourself who's going to take a back seat because you're not going to have three 20-point scorers on the team. You're going to have two. And a mid to high teens guy, and that mid to high teens guy, he's going to get ridiculed like his game has dropped off. So it's not going to be a good situation. It's, it's, it's not going to play out good. But Phoenix Lick said it. He said it, and he said it best. And now I do understand because I'm looking at it from a different perspective, is that with Wes, Russell, the, he, they can run him like that deer. Just keep running them, keep running them up and down the court. And what that does, that saves LeBron and AD. So when it comes to playoffs, they're healthy and ready to go. Now, if 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 West don't get hurt, then I see what you're saying. They're in a whole a better ballpark than they were before. Does that, does that kind of answer it, John? Are you talking one and five, one on one against Remember, five? Who's going to run with Russ? That's what we're talking about. Whenever we get on that, another.
Go ahead, say it again, Nine. Who's going to run with Russ? That's the big problem because you have a lot of old people who are stuck in their ways, and now you're asking them to run up and down the court like a 21-year-old. That's not going to happen. So there's going to be a lot of one versus five, and I, I, I see this exploding in the Lakers' face. Wow. Yeah, Phoenix. exactly right. And, and my thing is this. I mean, oh, yeah, Russ is going to run up and down the floor, but who's going to – he's not going to be able to help you on defense with that running. Facts. When they get on the defensive end of the floor, Russ running up and down the floor like a deer is not going to help them on defense. So those older guys with them bad knees and them bad yep. backs are going to have to be able to get back on defense. And they, you know they're going to stretch them out. They're going to stretch out the floor, and them old guys are going to have difficulties trying to get back. That's what's going to happen. I agree with d -Mac. Anybody else on that one? Yeah, but again, I'm looking at on YouTube right now. Everybody's talking about LiAngelo Ball needs to get better. Uh, uh, yeah, and that's what Macrina said. He's He's... He's a very strong-minded individual too, which um, D Mac just said. You're not you're not going to tell him too much. Getting better, you can say that about every player in the NBA. Facts. So so what so what I don't I just don't see the Lakers winning this year. I, I just don't. I don't. I don't. And let me ask, let me ask it a year. It reminds me of that year when the Cowboys went out and got all of those big name players thinking that that was going to help them win a championship and they just wasted a lot of money. Let me ask everybody else a question. What what moves did the Charlotte Hornets make to get to not get bounced past not get bounced in the first round? So what, <laughs> what moves did the Charlotte Hornets make? So they won't get bounced in the first round again. They they got bigger and more athletic. Size was, was their big detriment last year because in the playoffs with, with so much isolation and size become a big big factor and they were just too small last year. Yeah, truly. And I think that uh, them getting rid of Devontae Graham got rid of a whole lot of tension uh, between Melo and, um, and his position being solidified. So getting rid of Devontae Graham really helped out a lot, too. Yeah, but again, their draft choices, if we look at those draft choices, were not really, uh, really good for Charlotte. Because we still have a pro we still have problems and we still have weaknesses going into the playoffs when that time comes. Um, they need this one good experienced big man. I think that's the only piece that's missing for Charlotte right now. Let me what read. About, um, go ahead, go ahead. What about Mason Plumley? Yeah, I, now I like Plumley, but can he run? Good question. I haven't watched a whole lot of Plumley. No, no, he he wouldn't be a good fit with Lamelo. La and that's my problem. That's the problem because you, you, you like watch this. Let's talk about what we're seeing. We're seeing Le, Leandro do what Lavar taught his ball, running them these boys running those hills up and down the floor. No big. When he goes to the bench, he's in a full sweat, in a complete sweat. Why? Because he's doing what he was taught to do. Now, uh, Lamelo's going to do the same thing. Watch this. Miles Bridges is going to do the same thing. Why? Because he's on the end of most of those passes. Terry Rashur, he's going to run because he's in the corner to take those threes. But when it comes to a center, we see we had that problem. And P.J. Washington is not the center. If they do that again, I'm counseling league pass. Now, not with LaMelo on the team. You're you going to be re-upping your subscription. <laughs> what's, what's the Let me let me go to John. He says this: Russell Westbrook has never been a winner. Look at all the uh, superstars Russ had to Russ had that dipped on him. They didn't dip on him for the for no reason. They knew they could not win with Russ. Yeah, I'm gonna say this. You're right. 
John is 100% right. Hey, Russ, Russ got overinflated stats. But if you look at it, he's just a player who plays hard and fast, but he's very inefficient. And that's why I don't like his game. Wow. I concur. I Russ, concur. Russ, Russ, Russ does not look like fun to play with. Well, and why do you feel that way? Well, number one, he's not a great defender. Right. And, and always, that's true. I'm always suspicious of people who can't really defend their position, but they go off on offense. Right. Bradley Beal wanted him back, though. I, 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 a lot of time, people say they they want you back. That's just to keep a good relationship. But the reality is, no, 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 no. I'm happy he's out the door. <laughs> Kyle Kuzma's pumped over in Washington. He's pumped up. Kuzma said they're about to do some damage. Go ahead, I'm, fix. I'm I'm excited actually to watch Kuzma. What he can do with the green light. He's not a rookie no more. So none of that. None of those excuses. You. You've been in the league a little while now. You got, you got, you got all the space you need to operate. Let's see what he can do. Facts, facts, one hundred percent. Kuzma looks like he—he he really looks like the new Javale McGee. He does a lot of boneheaded stuff that makes you scratch your head. So, I'm not <laughs> expecting much from him, to be honest with you. Hmm. Have you watched a lot of Kuzma? Yes. Okay. His his best days were with with Lonzo. Oh, yes, they were. Yes, they were. Summer league and his his first year. And, and, and with LeBron, he looked at like the twelfth man off the bench. He, he just did everything wrong. I don't know if it was the pressure playing with LeBron, but he did not look good, and they couldn't wait to get him out of there. I think yes. when you, I think when you're just learning how to play the game, playing next to LeBron, you're you're not gonna look very good. But we, we we talking about a, a four or five year vet. We we can't use that excuse. But first second year player, yes. But but he four or five years, no, we can't use that excuse. Yeah, I don't think I think the excuse then is just you're playing with LeBron and AD, and you're and you're but, a three four. It's just not a good. But but, but LeBron good. and AD missed a lot of games, and his performance were not up to par. I'd have to see the numbers. Do you know what the comparison stats were when the uh, AD and LeBron were gone versus when they were there for Kuzma? Uh, no, no, I, I can't. I can't say that. I'm just going with what my eyes told me, and my eyes said, "Man, he he wasn't looking too good." Yeah. Well, that's why this year is important. Let's see. And now there's nothing we can say. It is what it is now. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, and moving, you can't, you moving can't make it to happen in Washington, it, it, that's it. Yeah, moving yeah, forward is going to be a log jam. Uh, a, a, a journeyman, his stats could be overinflated on a bad team, but when he get around good players, then you find out, yeah, he he's really a journeyman. He's already hey, you look at it, I don't know if he's it. thinking the same way like most journeymen who are chasing rings. He's already a champion. I think now he's looking for his stats and his name and his brand. Yeah, I look at a guy like Devin Booker, man. Devin Booker been in a year for seven. He's been in the league for seven years, and now he's starting to get some, some spotlight placed on him. Devin Booker's been doing the things he's doing for a minute now. Uh, it's just got showcased in the playoffs. And now people are starting to pay attention to him. Well, we know what that's about. That's that gatekeeper movement, but we're not going to go there because we don't want to get an <laughs> argument started tonight. But, <laughs> you know, we know, this is a good conversation. I, you know, also, you got to think about the money. I and mean, he knows to, for Kuzma to really get his money, he needs, I think, some high volume scoring seasons. <clears throat> and to be honest with you, man, I think if he's able to play in a comfortable environment, a lot of people don't understand LeBron James, Kobe Bryant. Them cats were stressful to play with, man. And a lot of superstars. See, I believe Russ can handle that because he's of that mindset already. So LeBron walking off the court, not talking to him, is not going to bother him. We all know how he's going to deal with it. But everybody else, man, them young cats, 
they had a hard time that year knowing they were leaving and they felt they were sabotaged and set up by LeBron. LeBron just has this this air about him. This that man, I just don't care about nobody. I'm here to win and that's it. And I think younger players can't deal with that. Yeah, because that's a lot of those guys idol. They coming into the league and they idolizing LeBron. And then when you actually get on a team with him and your idol disappoints you, it takes a lot out of their sales. That's why I love that one game, man, where Kuzma pushed LeBron back into the defense. You know, yes. other people other people would have stood on the floor and wouldn't say a word. But Kuzma exactly. said, man, play defense, bro. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah, and, and he, if, he, if he kept that, it's like it shows sparks of the potential, but then it'll just go away for too long a span. And, you know, people are not going to remember the good things you do. They're always going to remember the bad things you do. The, um, the um, unfor- um, go ahead, Nye. Could, could potential lay dormant for three, four years? And- I think it did with Devin Booker. No, that Devin Booker always been uh, uh, a good player. Kyle Kuzma was never that type of player. He's always been a journeyman. He, he He's a journeyman. He just been on one team, but he has a journeyman game. He's very inefficient. Uh, well, if you're a one div- one dimensional player and you haven't taken the steps to, to adjust and fix your game up, then yeah, he's just gonna stay where he's at. Um, but the reason I said Devin Booker is because Devin Booker, yeah, he's been doing that for a long time, but he's never been shown in the light that he's shown in now. So what's the difference now? Yeah, they went to the playoffs, but what was it that that let them know and, and made them say, hey, Devin Booker is our guy now. He went down to the crossroads. <laughs> I'm but, wrong, but man. I'm so, sorry. So, so sometimes a lot of players are better than we think. They just don't get the air time for us to really see it. This That's year, what I'm looking for. <laughs> yep. So we can't ignore that. So maybe that's what has to happen with a Kyle Kuzma because he definitely wasn't getting the airtime or, or the the ball in his hands or the control that he wanted to in in L.A. But See what happened with Kyle Kuzma like this in L.A. Kyle Kuzma be, became part of L.A. and when you're not here from here, that's a bad thing to do, a very bad thing because when you're not consistent and you don't meet the level of expectation of other people of L.A., man, they would turn on you quick. I've been, I, I, I've been here all my life, a sports fan all my life, coach high school football here. They will turn on you quick. And with Kyle Kuzma, when the media got on him and said he wouldn't, couldn't play defense and LeBron started saying, taking little shots, he was really done then. But he was, he was able to hang around and get that bubble ring. Look, this is a point we're missing. What role did they get him to play you know, because a lot of times we make the mistake, oh, man, if he go here, he, he going to score 20, this and this and this. And that's not what the team got him to do. So we also have to consider that because they might have him. Hey, Kuzma, you're only going to get 12 shots, you know, because we have so much dedicated to this player, so much dedicated to this player. So we can't just 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 throw it out there. Oh, man, he going to a bad team. He's just going to score 20 like that, and that's not the role they got him for. So we also have to consider that. But you got to realize this, Nine. His role kept changing based on LeBron. The first year he was there with the young fellas, the young guns, they were all learning what their roles were. As soon as LeBron came the second year, everything dissipated. Kuzma roles changed every year, every, every game, if you ask me. He was asked to do something different. That was a lot of stress and a lot of pressure for a young man. That's why I say to play with superstars is a very hard thing in some some people's cases. But, Big J, we can look at CC. We tend to look at it as fantasy basketball or fantasy football. We want to mix and match and think the players are still going to produce the same or even more, and it does not work like that when you get into a different system because Bradley Beal is going to get 25-plus shots. Facts. They drafted the rookie, 6'10 rookie, so he's going to get a daddy, 
Danny Avito or or something like that. I can't remember his name name properly, but he's gonna get a look. That that's their draft pick. That's their asset. Now Kuzma, Kuzma was just man. We just we want to just get rid of Russ, so we getting this back in return. But we don't know what role he's really gonna have. So we can't play back fantasy basketball with the numbers and hoping he's going to be something that I don't think is going to ever materialize. Right. I agree 100%. Like everyone said, man, I just think we, we can't throw spaghetti against the wall and see what's going to happen. I think we just have to wait. And the funny thing about this season, it is so different than most seasons because I, I've never seen it to where basketball is still taking the um, over NFL football right now. There's still more people talking about basketball than the NFL. And, and, and that tells you there's a lot going on to where um, the NBA is really dominating sports right now. Do you guys see that or you feel it's something else that re- no, the reason ba- football bas- is suffering? Basketball, basketball is a sport made for social media. And Facts. that's why it's still in the limelight. It's because of social media, because – you don't have a helmet on. Everybody see your face. They feel closer to the player. They have more of a relationship with the players, and that's why basketball is still going on. Great point. Great point. Um, before we get off of here, let me ask you a question. Um, do we feel that players should have to take this particular vaccine in order to play the sport? I say that should be a player's choice, not something that's forced. Okay, now if the NFL says that in order for you to play, you're going to have to take these vaccines. And I, which, I, would, I, I wouldn't agree with it. Okay, why not? Because this should be your choice. Nobody should be forced to do anything in a free country. Right. Okay, because it's going it's going back to that to where we I'm not going to talk about where I've seen this happen before, but several places. But it it looks like if this this particular COVID where we are right now gets out of control and like like the county here in Los Angeles, they're asking people to take the shot. If you work for the county of Los Angeles, you have to take the shot. There's a lot of jobs now telling people you have to take the shot. They're actually going to people's homes in Los Angeles and uh, Los Angeles County and saying you need to take the vaccine vaccination. And, and, and I, I can never, I can never agree with anything being forced. It should be an individual choice in a free, in a free country. We should have free choices, not forced choices. Facts. Facts. I mean, yes, that's true. That's if the government's telling you to take it when you have a private employer like the NFL, the NBA, or FedEx or Amazon, you know, and they see any loss in productivity because of people not being vaccinated, then, you know, your choice then is whether or not you want to have the job. That's where the freedom is. Do you want to go out and be an entrepreneur where nobody can tell you what to do, or are you going to? continue to work for someone and then be subject to random demands. Like you need to be vaccinated if you want to come into work. This is, this is only an issue because of the way America has treated its citizens. If they treated their citizens like humans, it wouldn't be this much distress and disdain, you know? So it's an American problem because they're the one who have people like, man, I don't trust. Why would I trust somebody who look like their only objective is to kill us? You know? So, so it, it has to do with, with relationships between the the citizens and the country. Right. And that's what they're saying. You're going to have to take that vaccination card everywhere you go. You're going to have to have that card. And, that, and that's the funny thing is because during slavery, in order for you to move, you had to have your papers. Or you couldn't move. So it's like 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 he said again, the government is controlling. But you know what, guys? We're going to come back on here and have this conversation. It's been amazing that you're on here with us. We thank the panel tonight for being on with Big J Let's Talk. We thank the room for being on Facebook, Twitter, 
um also youtube hey we appreciate you very much make sure you subscribe to our channel make sure you subscribe to all the young people in the channel and until next time you've been on with big j and you know what time it is gentlemen you want to say something before we leave out no and just thank you for uh, allowing us a platform to get up here and, and engage and, and discuss oh. that's cool thank you all right what about you nine research what you see so you understand what you saw. I like that, man. Okay. You got to coin that. Macrina, thank you very much for all you do. Everyone have a great one now. Be blessed. All right.